Madonna and Borderline coming up then. Jim Kerr on the show, one of our guests from Radio 2 Live in Leeds. We're going to have some Strictly fun with Richie. This is Radio 2 on the BBC Sounds app, on your smart speaker and on 88 to 91 FM. BBC News at 8 o'clock on Monday the 5th of September. Good morning, this is Claire Runacres. The new leader of the Conservative Party and the next Prime Minister will be revealed at lunchtime. Liz Truss is tipped to win. Ten people have been stabbed to death in a wave of attacks in a remote area of Canada and the autumn Covid booster vaccine programme is being launched in England and Scotland. Liz Truss is widely expected to be named as the new leader of the Conservative Party and Prime Minister when the winner of the contest to replace Boris Johnson is announced this lunchtime. The Foreign Secretary has led her rival Rishi Sunak in polls of Tory party members throughout the eight-week campaign. Ms Truss is thought to be considering a freeze on energy bills to help the rising cost of living. Our chief political correspondent Nick Erdley has more on what her plan might include. Her team are remaining very tight-lipped about exactly what it will look like, but for the last few weeks, senior people who will be in her cabinet have been discussing plans with the energy companies. Many in the sector are now optimistic that that could include some sort of price freeze, not necessarily the one that Labour was talking about where the government pays for it all, but potentially one where the government underwrites loans to the energy companies and we all pay back those energy costs over a longer time. There is no doubt, though, that this is going to be the issue that defines Liz Truss's early period in office. Kwasi Kwarteng, who's expected to be appointed Chancellor, has confirmed that a Liz Truss government would borrow more to help people through what he's called exceptionally difficult times this winter. Writing in the Financial Times, he sought to reassure markets that the UK is spaced to borrow more and that it would be done in a fiscally responsible way. Police in Canada have put three provinces on alert as they carry out a major hunt for two men suspected of stabbing to death 10 people and wounding 15 others. The attack in Saskatchewan is one of Canada's worst mass killings. The search for the two, named by police as Damien and Miles Sanderson, has been extended to Alberta and Manitoba. Carla Beck is the leader of the New Democratic Party, the opposition party in the province where the killings happened. Saskatchewan is a province that is tight-knit and... This really has shaken people. Um, if you can only imagine what it must be like to wake up to this kind of violence or even this kind of news and, you know, continued grieving and uncertainty as these two suspects are still at large in our province. Three men are being questioned about the death of nine-year-old Olivia pratt Corbell, who was shot at her home in Liverpool last month. A 34-year-old man has been arrested on suspicion of murder, while two men have been detained on suspicion of assisting an offender. Millions of people across England and Scotland are being invited for an autumn Covid booster injection from today. Wales started last week and Northern Ireland will do so later this month. Our medical editor, Fergus Walsh, has more about the booster rollout. Now, the eligible groups include the over 50s, those aged five and over who are in at-risk groups, that includes pregnant women and health and care workers. Now, this comes despite infection levels from COVID actually falling in England. They've fallen below one million infected for the first time since the start of June. But it's an attempt to try and get ahead of COVID because we are expecting another surge of infections come the winter. Criminal barristers in England and Wales are starting indefinite strike action today. They're calling for a 25% increase in legal aid fees, as Sancha Berg reports. This unprecedented strike will halt activity in courts across England and Wales and add to the backlog of almost 60,000 delayed cases. The Criminal Bar Association said its members took action with a heavy heart but were driven by years of neglect of the justice system. It said 300 young barristers left criminal practice last year because they couldn't afford to stay. The government has offered a 15% increase in legal aid fees and has so far refused to negotiate. The Criminal Bar Association hopes that will change with the arrival of a new administration. Tennis and the reigning men's US Open champion Daniel Medvedev has been knocked out in four sets by Nick Kyrgios of Australia. Kyrgios will now face another Russian, Karen Kachanov, in the quarterfinals. Cameron Norrie, the last remaining British player in the singles, will play the ninth seed, Andrei Rublev, this afternoon. 
the weather, there'll be spells of rain in northern Scotland this morning. Further south, it'll be mostly dry and sunny, although a band of showers will push into the southwest later. Top temperatures of 19 Celsius in Belfast, 22 in Edinburgh, 23 in Cardiff and 24 in London. BBC News, it's five past eight. Thank you very much, Claire, darling. BBC Radio 2. Listen live on the BBC Sounds app. The Zoe Ball brings the show. Happy Monday, Tony Tigers. Are we feeling great? How was your weekend? Uh, tell me everything. Best thing we saw this weekend, though, was our new baby grandson, Charlie, who was born last Thursday. Super happy for Joe and Liam and big sister Mia. That's from Claire in roughly 88291 on the text if you fancy saying hello. It is the 5th of September. It is National Be Late for Something today. So if you are late, don't feel too bad. That's your excuse. It's also the start of Know Your Numbers Week uh, to encourage people to get free blood pressure checks at one of the many pressure stations across the UK. And a very exciting night on EastEnders tonight. It's a special flashback episode about the Mitchell family. Jamie Winston